Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, this is Robert. Day 16 of the DIY tour. Things have been going pretty good. Uh, yesterday afternoon, kind of late, I met a guy out in the in the wilderness, I guess I'd say, of New Jersey somewhere, and he had a, a C70, uh, I think it's a 2004 he's having some issues with, considering pulling the head. I don't think it jumped time. Somebody thought it jumped time, didn't have any compression. So first thing this morning, that's where we're headed. Here we are with the C70. I checked timing. The exhaust cam was off one tooth. We put a little oil in the cylinders. We're going to crank this up. If this car has compression we're going to proceed to put everything back together and try to get it started but it's the c70 day 16 from here i'm gonna meet a guy that's going to donate some parts to the uh tour then i'm going to try to finish up on that v70r then try to uh meet or greet one or two people after that probably stay in new york again another night and sunday morning i think i have somebody that needs some help uh, repairing the dash then we're going to head south. Did a compression test. No compression in cylinders 1 through 4. 5 was fine. So somehow we may have some bent valve. We're going to do a leak down test. Got about half of this head pulled off. Now on this thing, this PCV on this side, it has a bolt that screws into the bottom of the intake manifold with these coolant lines and that bolts in there so when you're doing that pcv that's what you got to worry about there's your etm parts there and we got to pull off the exhaust manifold bolts now we're about to install the snab rip, rip kit and it comes with everything you need that metal tube there takes the place of that plastic tube that was going in the bottom of that ETM there so you got to pull your sensors out of that and that vacuum hose and plug that stuff into there now the nice thing about this is that it also has a port for meth injection if you decide to do that and we have that plugged down there where you see that yellow Teflon tape yellow Teflon plumbing tape is for gas uh, not for water so anyway we got the uh, two bolted to the bottom of the ETM now we're going to plug those sensors in lower the intake manifold in place and then continue to hook up the rest of the tubing and we're going to extend this to this with another vacuum tube with a junction we decided to bypass the little vacuum coolant thing on the bottom of the intake manifold on the passenger side. So we're running that intake tube from the bottom of the thermostat housing over to the line there where it goes. That's the coolant line. We got the intake manifold bolted on. We have the fuel line connected and the hose that's going to the catch can is coming up through here that's the most direct route so that we don't have a crimp in the hose that's running over to the catch can then from the catch can we're going to vent to the intake at the same time we're installing this snab reverse intercooler kit so I got the tube hooked up here I got the hose hooked up on the bottom of the ETM with the sensors swapped over I got the little hose there going there now on the back side of that I showed you earlier the meth injection port if we ever add that then I'm getting ready to hook the tube from here down to the bottom of the uh, intercooler then I'm gonna hook up the tube going over to the turbo and then we're going to button up this side of the engine and flush coolant. While we're back here, got things apart. We pulled the intake off to uh, get it out of the way of the heater hoses. And we found this tear down on the base of the PTC valve. So that's going to need to be dealt with. 
but I also wanted to show you the differences between the heater hoses. You see the tip of the old heater hose and the tip of the new heater hose. A lot of people don't know, but they have a different seal pack arrangement. So let me get those seals out of there because most people take the new ones, try to get them in. They can't get them in because they have an extra part on the new one that was on the old one, but the new one doesn't have it because you notice it's got a collar. The old one doesn't have a collar. So let me show you that. So here's the arrangements of the seals. Here you have the plastic, which is short. Then you put another piece of plastic up against that. Then you put rubber. Then you put thin plastic. Then you put your last piece of rubber. On this, since it has a collar, you don't have to put the plastic there. You put the rubber, the thin plastic, and then the rubber. And then you just plug it in. But if you don't remove that stuff and you try to put this extra piece of plastic on here, it won't fit. So make sure you only use the new collar rubber plastic rubber. We have the intake tube back on. We have the coolant lines plugged in real quick and easy. Now we're going to install the catch can. So the breather hose that would wrap over to the intake manifold base has this hose coming out. We're going to put that on the end on this professionally made catch can and then we're going to go out over into that tube where that PCV would have normally wrapped around the motor and plugged in. And basically a catch can is designed to take the air, hot oil vapor air and trap the oil molecules in there that normally get sucked into the intake tube at the base and blown out of the turbo tubing and get trapped in the intercooler. So most people have intercoolers that are saturated with oil. You may have also have removed your intake tube or any of your turbo intercooler piping and complained about oil being in it. Also, on the bottom of your intercooler, on the passenger side, there's actually a weep hole to drain out moisture in the oil vapor moisture that gets in that intercooler. So, if you get a catch can, you can now get a new intercooler that would perform a little better and not worry about it getting saturated with oil on the inside. So don't buy an oversized good intercooler without installing a catch can because it'll just get saturated with oil as well. Now on the catch can what you want to do is every five or ten thousand miles or so you simply unscrew a catch can if you have a professional one like this one and you look inside of it and see how much oil has collected from the vapors and simply dump it out. Some people also pull the drain plug out of the bottom of it and drain it into a little container where they can dispose of it, recycle it or whatever. But there you can see the uh, strainer assembly on there that's designed to take the oil vapors and trap the air that goes in there specially designed and drip it back into this what they call catch can. So it's catching the oil that's in the oil soaked air that comes off the engine, especially on turbo cars. Took a dinner break from working on the car, but as you can see, the rip kit has been installed. That's the reverse intercooler pipe there, runs over the engine. The pipe that goes down to the bottom of the intercooler has been installed. It's a uh, snap system. There's some silicone tubing. This guy has a manual boost controller there to control his boost. The computer has to adapt to the boost that he has dialed in. And the next thing we need to do really is put the air box in and we could actually start this vehicle. However, since we cleaned out the PCV kit, we're going to change the oil. We're going to flush the coolant and he wants to replace his um, heater core. Typically you come in here 
you pull this carpeting back and you see the yellow based heater core and this one has a black one so more than likely it's been replaced not sure when that would have happened but it I'm pretty sure it has been replaced if it's been replaced longer than two or three years ago there is a chance that it's going bad because some go bad i heard in two or three years now i don't know when this one has been replaced so i'm gonna ask him if he wants to go ahead and replace it and i'm going to try to see if i can find a date or something on this one the guy that i'm helping with this vehicle actually has a camera with the long stem on it and as you can see as suspected with this black heater core bottom this is a niece's heater core but i don't really see like a manufacturer date or nothing like that it's got these different numbers on them but where it says the date i don't see an actual date let me see if i can focus in on that So we got the oil drains and the owner has one of those IPD uh, belly protection pans. Kind of a thick grade aluminum I believe but it protects you from knocking a hole in your oil pan and stuff like that and you can access the oil drain bolt without removing that so that was kind of nice. As I already said the heater cord coming out is a Nisus and the bottom looks good but on the top corner looks like there was some seepage going on there now a heater core as long as it's in good structural shape it could leak and still last for a couple years I had one that was seeping maybe something like that corner and that went on for years so the sad part is whoever put this in they didn't date it for us so we don't know how long it was in there uh, because it's got that seepage I would not use that as a used unit I'm just going to dispose of it now this one that the owner purchased is a bear unit it actually has its own tag with the date on it which is the 16th of July 2014 I don't <coughs> I don't think you can see that but anyway lights washing it out let me see if I could get that where you can see it but I'm going to date this one of the date that I put it in and then I'm going to there it is and then I'm going to try to date the edges out here where the panel clips on with one of those silver markers so let me get the seals put this in the holder and get this installed I did catch most of the coolant leak with that trash bag as you know we installed a reverse inner cooler kit if that stuff's not installed properly the car won't start you got a brand new mass airflow sensor that's installed the air box is in all the coolant lines are hooked up these little air pipes in we have the heater core in insecure the catch can in we topped it off with water because we're kind of doing the flush we don't have the thermostat in so that it could cycle that stuff through I topped off the oil now uh, he's going to hit the starter see if this timing belt and everything is connected properly we had this fuel line disconnected so we don't have any fuel pressure but he turned the key let it sit a few seconds turned it off now he's going to go ahead and start it up for the first time fired right up so we're good to go check to see how the timing belt tracking it seems to be tracking pretty good look down in there look for fuel leaks don't see any fuel leaks check for water leaks and we're going to take it on the test drive after we get done with the coolant and stuff probably take it on test drive tomorrow morning so that's it for tonight, day 16. Tomorrow is day 17. I'm gonna finish up, uh, have a few meet and greets in New York, help a guy with a brake bleed and anything else that I could take care of tomorrow. And tomorrow night I'm gonna be heading south. 
If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.